how to make money as a watchmaker or in other words how not to get bankrupt <laughs> um, trying to become a watchmaker because losing a lot of money in this hobby or profession is very easy to do. Well, cheers everybody. Hey everybody, my name is Carl Slaap and I'm a watchmaker here in the Netherlands. And I was thinking about making a video about what was the real information I needed when I started as a watchmaker but wasn't available. Um, I started not too long ago, only 10, 12 years ago. And I talk about the Netherlands for a moment. Uh, the environment was a bit hostile. Uh, there were some amazing watchmakers who really helped me out. But there were a lot of <laughs> not so amazing watchmakers not really willing to help me out because they said, well, they was uh, in fear of losing clients or uh, training competition. But now the work is so immense, uh, the amount of work uh, worldwide, we really do need watchmakers. So I try to give you a bit of advice how to start as a watchmaker, um, not to make the mistakes I did. Uh, don't get me wrong, I am happy I made that mistake, but it was my decision to do so. Uh, I'll tell you a bit more about that later on. Um, how to make money as a watchmaker, or in other words, how not to get bankrupt <laughs> um, trying to become a watchmaker, because losing a lot of money in this hobby or profession is very easy to do. Well, cheers everybody. It is an insane profession because there are so many contradictions. To do your work well, you need peace and quiet and full attention to your, uh, to your work. But on the other hand, you need clients who will phone you, email you, um, WhatsApp, uh, Messenger, FaceTime, whatever, uh, that really breaks the concentration. So if you don't be careful, you'll be communicating all day and trying to repair the watches and uh, all night um, and try to make some money because a watchmaker only makes some money when the client picks up the perfectly running watch. Now there are uh, contradictions and uh, conflicting interests. Do you need a piece of peace and quiet? Do you need a lot of clients so you can uh, uh, start your workshop? Um, yeah, that is something to take into account. Um, watchmaking uh, is notorious for the cost of tools, machines, the layout of your workshop, um, everything costs money and costs a whole lot of money. Um, before you start buying everything you see and maybe you need it, uh, that's an easy mistake to make, it's a real trap because you get enthusiastic, excited, you want the stuff so then you think uh, I can make more money or I'll be better as a watchmaker. Um, try to take a step back and first learn about the different kinds of watchmakers they are. Because there are industrial watchmakers uh, working in an industry specialized in just one movement. Uh, they are not their own boss, usually, and um, they go to work, work on several movements, and then go home again. Then you have artisan watchmakers, usually more vintage watch, uh, watchmaking for vintage watches, movements. 
and they make their own parts uh, um, they uh, have the machines they can do it um, uh, make make winding stems make your own balance staffs on a lathe uh, stuff like that um, it's a complete different way of being a watchmaker if you're in a market stall and only pressing in batteries in ports movements that is a watchmaker and uh, those watchmakers probably see more what uh, movements in one day than I see in one month for, uh, for example and so there is no good and bad they're just different kinds of watchmakers take that to account um, if you want to start as a watchmaker and maybe as a hobby watchmaker which I prefer to call a part-time watchmaker because hobby sounds a bit low grade but it doesn't say anything about the quality of your work you can be a part-time watchmaker and have another job uh, next to it and you get, can get excellent results even though you're not a full professional so I like to refer to part-time watchmakers as instead of hobby watchmakers what I would like to advise it's only an advice it's my personal opinion but maybe uh, uh, you gain some advantage to it is invest in experience uh, try to get an apprenticeship try to find somebody who is helping you out has got the experience has got already the tools the machines the parts the clients and that's willing to help you out because for me and I say that the the, the students here in our workshop at Chronoglide uh, a lot watchmaking is the perfect balance between the practical and the theory because you can read all the books about watchmaking seeing every single YouTube uh, video and that doesn't make you a great watchmaker and if you the perfect technician and you can handle all the tools but you don't know what you're doing or how a watch works that will never make you a great watchmaker so it's a perfect balance between theory and knowledge and practicality knowing what to do to a watch know how to uh, the torque of uh, a, a screw um, how fast it should be stuff like that um, so try to invest in experience and even that experience can be in your spare bedroom with just a couple of screwdrivers a couple of tweezers and let's get on with it um, if you follow that road make sure your work is measurable because that's the only way to improve so you have to invest in a time grapher if it's a Chinese Wichi, uh, a Weichi or a Swiss Wichi, whatever if you can measure the amplitude and if you're into that uh, please see another video on our what's uh, on YouTube channel uh, Chronoglide about how a watch works uh, stuff like that if you make it measurable then you can uh, measure your if you're improving uh, not if it's sticking so it should be okay no as you probably know by now um, a watch that is ticking um, can be just horrible and the oil bag can be dry and the spring uh, has lost its, its force its power so just running on time doesn't say anything about the quality of your work as a watchmaker so um, make your work measurable and then you can improve uh, what you're doing another thing is if you are tired or upset or in a hurry you will never get a great result so if you start working just be zen be in the zone and try to take it step by step 
Um, if it has to be finished uh, within 10 minutes, well, it will probably break within 10 minutes. Uh, if you're in a hurry, just stop. Uh, have a coffee, take a step back, because it'll never work. Mm. And like I said, invest in experience. Nobody is born a watchmaker. Um, I started as a professional when I was 35. Uh, always uh, in technical work, but still, nobody is born a watchmaker. You have to gain experience, uh, learn a lot about yourself and uh, uh, how you react. Um, know a bit more about watchmaking, what to expect, and learn the trade. That's it. And that will take time. But it is a profession, artisanal, and so you won't learn it in just a couple of weeks. Impossible. Especially because there are so many exceptions in uh, watch parts, watch movements, uh, if you got a pocket watch from 200 years old or a high-end uh, wristwatch movement, uh, very modern, it's such that the logic is the same, but you have to get the experience uh, not to make the mistakes. So if I can give you advice as uh, uh, starting out as a watchmaker, because we really do need new watchmakers, uh, try to specialize. If you specialize, first only do Seiko's, uh, pocket watches or uh, uh, one simple movement or caliber. Uh, if you specialize, you need just a limited amount of tools, of parts, then you can really go through the rabbit down the rabbit hole and really gain experiences in that one particular uh, field of watchmaking and then your uh, investment will not be too big i did it completely wrong and i still think for me that was was the best way i wanted to know everything about all watches from all uh, er, er, um, eras and I wanted to be able to make all watch parts on vintage machines so that was just a huge amount and my investment in experience was insane uh, work day and night uh, well um, maybe a bit too much but now it got me where I am now and uh, well I'm quite happy uh, with the uh, workshop with the people who work here with the colleagues and we have fun and we make uh, beautiful stuff so for me that was the best way uh, but if you don't have too much money to invest uh, please don't do that because you go bankrupt and uh, um, then you need uh, to make money way too fast and your love for the profession uh, will be lessened by the, uh, the need for money or return on, of investment. So uh, please take, take that, that to in, into account. Uh, for me that was okay, but just think about it. What kind of watchmaker do I want to be first? And what kind of watchmaker am I inspiring to, to be in the future? Uh, what do I want to do? Uh, like I said, the contradictions in watchmaking is insane. You need a peace and quiet to work on movements. But then again, you need customers who will phone you, who will email you, who will text you. That doesn't go together. Um, yeah. Best uh, advice, please invest in experience and for months and months and months, even if it's in a spare bedroom, 
just a tweezer and a couple of uh, screwdrivers. Um, try to repair watches and improve every single time. And don't be complacent. A watch movement is never finished. There's always something that can be done to improve the amplitude by uh, polishing the pivots, the, uh, the overall view, uh, polishing the screw heads, making it bright and shiny, black polish, all beautiful. It is never finished. So you'll be the judge of your own result and uh, um, your improvements, the, the, the level you want to aspire to. I really do hope this small thought about watch what, what kind of watchmaker you would like to be is helpful. Um, I would really like to have this uh, information just when I started it. Uh, like I said, well, when I here in Holland, uh, the environment was sometimes a bit hostile. Uh, but then again, uh, it made me more determined uh, to be the best watchmaker I could be. And um, don't try to buy anything at, at, at once. Grow as a watchmaker and think about how your path, how you would like that to be. Um, and then maybe the best advice I can give you, try to retain the joy of watchmaking because watchmaking and making money um, in history, usually a watchmaker was uh, um, in a jeweler shop, <laughs> possibly at the cellar somewhere, <laughs> and uh, working on watches. And this sad bit throughout history, a watchmaker loves repairing watches, loves the profession, loves to do it. It's born out of hobby and then get into the profession. When you really love to do something, you're not thinking about the cost or the making, making money uh, doing so. Please keep that in mind. A watchmaker loves repairing watches, but there has to, the money has to come in from somewhere. So even if you like doing what you're doing, uh, make sure uh, you get the, the compensation right um, and not yeah sure I do it and uh, forget about the money or your paycheck or yeah it should be okay like this uh, I hope all these small nuggets um, that would really help me when I was starting out is helping you out um, Please subscribe to our watchmaking channel, uh, Chronoglide. Please leave comments. We love to read your comments. So please leave your comments. And if you have any suggestions about future projects or topics, please let me know. Um, well, try to grow in your profession, gain experience, and still try to have fun because it's a beautiful, beautiful profession and uh, we really do need you guys the watchmakers who are starting out so i hope this was helpful please leave the comments and hope to see you soon see ya bye bye